Joining us right now is the CEO of Oscar Health, Mark Bertolini. And Mark, welcome. Thanks. Hi, Becky. Hi. So this is a company that went public back in March. You joined in April right, right. after. Right. Um, it's been a really impressive run since the IPO. What's going on? What are you talking about? Where are things stand right now? Yeah, I think it's really first and foremost about getting to profitability and building the cash flow and capital we need to grow. Um, and so in 2023, we took a step back, slowed the business down a bit, um, and, um, and, and decided to focus on profitability. So getting the technology right, getting the operating model right, getting the team right. And so that's been our, our work. And in the first two quarters of the year, we've been total company profitability for the first time in the company's history. Is so that the path um, you're going to stay on, or do you have to get back to growth at some point in investing? We will be getting back to growth. So our projection is for the um, for January is to grow faster or at the market for the ACA, which is about 15 to 20 percent. Is this your kind of proof to investors, though, we can do this if we need to? We can change these, make these adjustments, and turn a profit any time if need be? Well, given where we've come from, quite frankly, um, it's kind of pretty straightforward on how to grow and improve margins. Um, so we did a lot in the cost infrastructure of the company, uh, particularly on the operating side. Um, Mario and team have been building large language models that have automated a lot, large pieces of the back of our business for some time. So we've been working on this before AI was the cool thing to talk about. And where do you stand right now? First of all, uh, what spe specifically did you do to improve margins? So first we renegotiated a number of big provider contracts, including our latest PBM um, update. So um, the company had not renegotiated the deal for four years. I suggested we move forward and get that done. We got a large piece of savings over the next four years um, that will then push through the costs of the company um, and ultimately be able to generate margin out of it. Was this just, you came in as somebody who'd been running Aetna, who knew the industry so, not, so well, knew how this worked, came into what was kind of a technology company and just said, here's the operating basics. Here's yes. how you put things together. Here's how you do this. Right. <laughs> What a concept. Right. And it's, <laughs> and it's been great. I mean, the team has been working hard on it. Um, even when I was an advisor before I became a, a CEO, we're working on operating models, staffing models, how many people should we have, um, how do we focus the technology on things that really matter, like the member experience. Our MPS is 57, where the industry's at zero. Um, so there's a lot of really good opportunity in the platform. Now the platform's set with operating leverage to allow us to grow in the first quarter of next year in a sizable way. We're, we're, we're talking about 20% around that, a little less on membership, a little more on, on revenue. And we've been able to price through in margin um, that we otherwise didn't have in the past because of the cost changes we made, both operationally and on the medical side. So AI is a great buzzword. It's something everybody's yeah. working at. If you guys have been working on this for years, what, what does AI do for you, and how does that compare to what somebody like an Aetna would have? So our strength is quite frankly that we have a single threaded platform with one version of the truth of data all along the way. So there aren't multiple Mark Bertolini's, for example, in the system. There aren't multiple um, providers of the same name in the system. We so you have, don't have old legacy networks you're trying to bring together right. and make everything work and All talk. the database is single threaded, the, the, the platform is. So the use of large language models, particularly on the back end of the business, you know, translating Chaucerian um, ex explanation of benefits into actual English, um, it reduces phone call volume and follow-up and confusion, um, improves member satisfaction. So we, we're in the process of implementing 47 different large language models that we've developed over the last six months.